This is Philippians 2, sorry, Philippians 3 and verse 24. Our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. Kal halal Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rukwak Kodash. Double honors, the apostles and elders of great millstone, where I learned this truth from. Peace and salutations to the brothers on down teaching, preaching, pushing this gospel. Good news to the four corners of the earth, waking up the hopeful elect of the house of Israel. Greetings also to the few sisters that tune into these video epistles. I call this lesson the citizens of heaven eagerly await our Savior's second coming. I probably switched the words around, but something like that. That's what we're waiting for. And the, the prophets throughout the ages have always been looking and asking, are you going to set it up now? Remember when he, when Yahweh Shai, that's the name of our Savior, his true Hebrew name, his father, our power in heaven, is Yahweh. And the disciples, when he was resurrected, wanted to know immediately, are you going to set up your kingdom now? So there's nothing new here. We're eagerly awaiting our Savior's return. And someone made a comment I wanted to repeat one of the brothers in a lesson and add on to it here in this. The Mosa is making uh, hopefully elect, that's what we refer to ourselves. The true children of Israel, they've given us a bunch of bywords calling us Negroes, Latino, Native Americans. Uh, the dispersed, we look like who we look like. There's no such thing as a so-called black person or so-called white person who is the devil in the earth practicing all this wickedness. No such thing. We are the true children of Israel. We trace our lineage back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's who we are. And the Most High is making us the hopeful elect numb to this world and its madness. And I was thinking this is probably like a when you if you ever get the surgery anyone who has a surgery and they're going to before surgery you get this uh, uh, anesthetic before surgery because there's going to be some surgical strikes taking place one of them for example is the <clears throat> the implantable device that's in uh, revelation 13 16 17 they hate when we speak about they say you're obsessed why you keep talking about that well that is what's going to bring the uh, end of this man's rulership in quick time, quick and fast, as soon as he makes that mandatory. That's the end of him. We've got Jacob's trouble, of course, and all the pestilence and famine and everything that's going to be happening there, which is going to be terrible on the land, all the plagues, and then full-scale intercontinental ballistic missiles are going to be flying. They're going to darken the skies. World War Three. let's get back to it here. Don't want too much of me speaking. Let's read the scriptures, read the book. The answers are in here. Philippians 3, let's go back to it. Let's start now from 18. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Yahawashai Hamashiach. There's a lot of these people now the scripture, I think it's First Peter 4, 17, said the judgment will begin in the house, the house of Israel. And there's real division. It's been, we can see it clearly every day these people open their mouth. One of these scriptures say, if, you, if a fool doesn't open his mouth, no one knows he's a fool. But as soon as he opens his mouth, he starts speaking, he reveals his folly and that he's an idiot. That they are the enemies of the cross of Yahawashai, whose end is destruction, whose power is their belly. How many views have you got? That's what it's all about. How much money can I collect from this thing? They're not interested in the truth of the gospel and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord, Yahawashai Hamashiach who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Our power is named Yahweh. It means he is, he to be the existing one. Let's get Corinthians here. 
1 Corinthians 1. Let's go from 5. That in everything ye are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Yahawashai was confirmed in you, so that ye come behind in no gift waiting for the coming of our Lord Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. Let's refer to the manifestation, the revelation. And I want you to pay attention during this lesson to all these possessive pronouns, we and us and you. And it's all very personalized. Why? Because it's only to one set of people, the children of Israel. No one else. Verse 8, who shall also confirm in you unto the end that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Yahawashai Hamashiach. Romans 8. We just picked out a few of these. Let's speak to this anticipation, this anxious looking and waiting. Yes, we're looking in the sky for the sky God for all you mockers and scoffers. Say, why don't you just uh, just get on with your life and be the best version of yourself. There is no one coming from the sky. Well, you can believe what you want to believe. We believe there is a power who's coming from the east. And yes, he's coming to save us because we are in bondage under this Edomite calling himself the white man. This is his kingdom and we can't wait to get out of it. Trading places is going to take place. Romans 8, let's start from 19. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of the power. For well, the creature was made subject as under the rule to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. We didn't make ourselves because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption. That's this fleshly uh, suit that we're wearing. Corruption in the glorious liberty of the children of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Verse 22, for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to it, the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. We are waiting. We are waiting. And we are hoping. We are expecting. We are looking. We are getting anxious. We can see the prophecies being fulfilled. Any minute now, this man's got to pull the trigger. He's been boxed in. The scripture says his, the hooks have been put in his jaw. He's been dragged to do all these prophecies that are written in the book, Titus 2. Let's go from 11. For the grace of our power that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great power and our Savior, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us, redeem meaning to buy back, re meaning back, or like a do-over, like in the word repeat, for example, and then deem is to purchase, and he's the only one who can do it. It's like Deuteronomy 28, 68. There's no one going to buy you. But it's him. He's the only one who can redeem us. And he's coming again. We're looking for and hasting. We're going to read that in a moment. And purify unto himself a peculiar people. Zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Some, a lot of people don't like to be told if they make some kind of error should be glad that somebody's picking out looking oh so you've made an error you need to fix that up and then move, move on but they get angry when they're uh, rebuked or anything what type of people are these who do not want to rebuke you've never made a mistake what such strange people they're surely not of this fold uh first thessalonians 1 and 9 
for they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you and how ye turn to the most high from idols he see a lot of our folk they haven't been born again there's nothing their mind has not been renewed you see turn from idols to serve the living and true power whose name is Yahweh's only begotten son is Yahweh Shai and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead even Yahweh Shai whose name means a savior redeemer and deliverer which delivered us from the wrath to come it's coming it's that song you can feel it in the air Jude 20 to 23 but ye beloved building up yourselves in your most holy faith praying in the holy spirit keep yourselves in the love of our power looking for the mercy of our lord yahweh shai hamashiach unto eternal life that's the goal here that's what's on the line it's not play time ramping time done and of some have compassion making a difference and others saved with fear pulling them out of the fire hating even the garment spotted by the flesh ah oh, all oh, praises to our power it's time to wake up from sleeping second peter three let's just get a few of these here let's go from 11 seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the most high god yahweh wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat nevertheless we according to his promise look for new heavens and a new earth when you look this word new up is kainos means refreshed it's this earth that's going to be refreshed it's no we're not going to be floating away in the sky no it's right here right here nevertheless we according to his promise which was made to abraham passed on to Isaac and passed on to Jacob and his 12 sons, the patriarchs of which we come. And no one can take it away from us. Even those who turn their back who are Hebrew Israelites, they're going to be reborn in their right mind into the kingdom. You can't, this is the power of the blood that was shed on the cross by Yahawashai Hamashiach. That's his name. This is the power, this is a sacrifice. That all Israel will be saved. Two thirds in all the land which is Babylon, the great America, will be lost. Two out of every three Hebrew Israelites, but they will be reborn into the kingdom. This is one of the mysteries that's been revealed in our time. All Israel will be saved. We're reading it again, Second Peter three and twelve. Nevertheless, we, according to His promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness oh yes wherefore beloved seeing that ye look for such things be diligent that ye be made found of him in peace without spot and blameless just get a last few scriptures here john bible falling apart john 14 uh, 20 at that day ye shall know this is red letter how was I speaking at that day ye shall know that I am in my father and ye in me and I in you he that hath my commandments and keepeth them he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest I love this word to reveal to make known that which was hidden I will reveal myself unto him. It's a privileged position to know of this truth. Let's get, uh, let's get Amos before we wrap up with this last. Yeah, let's get Amos 5. Amos 5 from 
18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. See this, it's going to be a terrible, terrible, dreadful day as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him. Can you imagine this? A lion, how fierce a lion is. You run away, you get away from him and then there's a bear equally as tenacious, uh, terrible, fiery temper. Those goes huge long claws, one swish of his arm and that's you done with. Read it again as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. It is so descriptive. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light? Even very dark and no brightness in it. I hate, I despise. Who says the most high doesn't hate? I hate, I despise your feast days. Your, your, your Christmas and your... All this Halloween and Easter and all this madness that they keep. I don't worship. And nothing to do with the scriptures. I hate, I despise your feast days. And I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. The most I will not appreciate all of your madness. And this day is going to be a terrible, terrible day. Let's wrap up with John 16. A couple of verses here. John 16. Skip the last few verses. Red letter, Yahawashai. Says 31, Yahawashai answered them, Do ye now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I'm not alone, because the Father is with me. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation lot of trouble, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. All praises to our power, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, the citizens of heaven eagerly await our Savior's second coming. Shallow arm till the next lesson. No fear, no sorrow.